And the church said, say amen again. One time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. I feel like preaching. Amen. All right. That last little song, y'all y'all had me going. Amen. 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 I know that he will. Ah, if you would, if you would, stand on your feet. Turn to 1 Samuel. Amen. Turn me up just a little bit. Amen. 1 Samuel. Uh, chapter 9, find verse 3, amen. If I'm only doing one verse, that lets you know something already. I'm already ready to dance and shout up in here, amen. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 3, there you find these words recorded. Now the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost, and Kish said to his son Saul, please take one of the servants with you and arise, go and look, for the donkeys. If you don't mind, I want to preach from this thought, the importance of donkeys. The importance of donkeys. I, 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 I read this in the Word, and I got a little perplexed. I got a little confused. Lord, why would you have this seemingly uh, a unique story embedded in the Bible. Why would you put this story in the word of God? And God said, I needed to put this story in the word of God because there's some folk in here today that don't understand there is importance in every story. And not only is there importance in every story, you got to learn how to see yourself in the text. Y'all don't say amen, that's all right, I'm going to say amen by myself. If you don't watch it, I'll shout and be shouting by myself. You, the importance of the donkeys. Now, there are some, some roles in this text that you ought to see yourself in. Now, first of all, we have the donkeys. Amen, Walls. We have Saul, and then we have the father. And here it is. Here it is. The father sends Saul on what is seemingly a, a, a worthless uh, journey. It seems like it's a sorry assignment. And I need to talk to some folk that you get real with God every once in a while. And God has sent you on some assignments that when you look in the mirror, you say to yourself, I know I got more skill than this. I know I got more talent than this. But God is still sending me on assignment to go look for some dumb. Maybe I'm the only one that, that's ever looked in the mirror and had to look up to God and say, I know I'm more talented than this assignment, but is there anybody in here that understands if you can't look for donkeys, you can't look for men? Preach up in here, Davis. If you can't sweep the sheets, you can't call the name. You got to understand that the, the praises of the people start with one little whisper. You got to learn how to be faithful over every assignment. The problem with the church is you want to be president before you a member. Ah, oh, help me up in here. You, you want to lead before you learn how to follow. But the glory of the Lord is you got to be a servant before you lead. Ah, uh, so the assignment, the assignment to be petty, but anybody in here understand with every assignment, God is bringing you more glory. Oh, y'all missed it up in here. With every assignment, God is bringing you more glory. Is there anybody in here that understand if I do the little things, God will make me ruler over many. If I do the little things, God will blow me up in the right time. The problem with the church is nobody wants to do the little things. Everybody wants to do the big thing. But I need to talk to some folk that don't mind doing the little thing because it's the little thing that help the kingdom grow. The importance of donkeys, the assignment was, uh, I need you uh, to go and uh, look for uh, these donkeys. I want you to understand. I want you to understand. Saul was a fine brother. Uh, I ain't gay. I'm just telling you what was in the text. Uh, he is a good looking brother. Uh, he's head and shoulders over everybody else. Uh, and he sends this tall, good looking brother uh, to go look for donkeys. Uh, that lets me know you ain't too cute to do anything in church. 
Y'all, let me back up and get some of y'all. Some of y'all think you're too cute to pick up trash. But I stopped by to tell you, if you can't pick up trash on this side, how you gonna pick up anything on that side? I show the Lord my faithfulness by doing the little things over here. Uh, so you got to be faithful to your assignment. You got to be faithful to your assignment, uh, even when your assignment uh, doesn't look like it's going to bear any fruit. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Uh, you ever been sent to witness to somebody uh, that seemingly won't even receive the Lord? Uh, and no matter how good you are, uh, they still roll their eyes at you. Uh, no matter how much you tell them about God, uh, they still act stank to you. Uh, no matter how much you pray for them, uh, they still roll their eyes at you. Uh, don't worry about that person. Uh, thank God for the assignment. Because uh, his word says, uh, if I just say what he told me to say whatever I send out uh, is going to come back to God uh, and accomplish uh, what it was sent out to do and then sometimes you get the dirty assignment uh, I want to talk to some of y'all up in here <laughs> that the assignment you have uh, is unlike the assignment of everybody else on your pew. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> it's one thing <laughs> to sing in the choir. <laughs> it's another thing to always have to sing back up. Uh, come on now, come on. You know some of y'all want up the microphone. Huh? But what happened when your assignment is to sing back up? Huh? What happens when you ain't been called to be glad as night? Huh? You've been called to be one of the pips. Huh? Can you still sing huh? and be one of the pips? Huh? Or will you try to get in the limelight? Huh? I need to talk to some folk huh? that you can be the backup singer, huh? the backup dancer, huh? and still be happy huh? as long as the kingdom huh? is getting large you will be the backup singer all day long where my bebop folk at uh, and one thing you find about a donkey is a donkey never looks at the mass and say I want to be treated like a horse uh, y'all missed that the donkey never looks at the mass and say I want to be a dog but the donkey is all right with the assignment uh, of being a donkey. Uh, second thing about a donkey, uh, the importance of the donkey is uh, you don't need to pet a donkey. Uh, uh, I, need, I need to talk to some of y'all country folk. Brother Selman, you've been in the country. Some, some of y'all born in the city. Y'all understand about being in the country. Uh, in the country, you had a horse uh, that you would put onto the team uh, and pull the buggy, uh, but you had some mules uh, that was good uh, for plowing. And the one thing about a good old plow mule uh, is that you ain't got to pet a plow mule. Uh, all you got to do is feed it uh, and make sure it got water, uh, and a plow mule uh, will plow all day long. Uh, well, here's the problem in the church. Uh, too many of y'all need petting. Uh, you won't just grow up and be up. You need somebody to pet you. Tell me I look good. Tell me I feel good. Tell me I did a good job. Tell me I prayed well. Tell me I sung well. We need some donkeys that don't need to be petted. Just give me some food and give me some water and let me work. Uh, too, too, too many. Too many. Too many of y'all want to be petted. How, how, how I know, because you always going to everybody, looking at them in their face. Don't you see what I did? Don't you see what I said? Don't you see what I did? Don't you see how I sung? Don't you see how I prayed? I need to talk to some folk that if don't nobody else say anything to you, if don't nobody else pat you on the back, you going to keep on working because it's your assignment. If don't nobody pat you, you going keep on working because uh, you're bringing glory to the Father. Uh, in fact, let me give you some good news. Uh, don't pet me. Uh, let me get my glory uh, over yonder. Uh, just keep on pushing me. The donkeys, the donkeys, the donkeys don't need to be, they don't need to be pet. With the horse, you got to go out there and you got to brush him down. You got to make sure the shoe's on him right. But that old mule, 
You just shoot him one good time. He ain't got to put a lot of maintenance in that old mule. Put him out there in the past. That old mule, all right, he, he, he ain't looking for no help. He understand what he's been called to do. But some of y'all, praise God, know your calling, but you in the handout ministry. I need you to put some in my hand. I need you to pat me with your hand. And I need you to hold me with your hand. But I need to talk to some of y'all that you ain't in the handout ministry. In fact, the only time your hand out is when your hand is up and this cup for the Lord. I don't want your blessing. I want his blessing. I don't need you to pat me on the back. I won't hear him say, well done. I don't need you to hold me. I want him to hold me in the midnight hour. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm working for. Y'all, 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 y'all still with me? Some of y'all done left up out of here. Don't be calling me no donkey. You don't know who I'm is. I called you a donkey because the word called you a donkey. And in fact, you better learn how to let the word call you all kinds of names. Because every time the word calls you a name, there's a reason for it. I don't mind if he called me a donkey. I don't mind if he called me a dog. Just keep on calling me. I don't mind if he called me a servant. Just keep on calling me. If you keep on calling me, where there's a donkey or a dog, where there's a servant or whatever sooner or later you gonna call me son let me get up out of here they all you got to be faithful to your assignment you should not need any padding and then the other thing i found out about a donkey a donkey is a beast of burden I had to look up that phraseology, beast of burden. What exactly does a beast of burden mean? And the word talked about the fact, when I started doing some, some, some research and I got to the word, I started looking at the origin of the word, and a beast of burden means it's literally been born and bred to bear the weight of other folk. That went over some of y'all head. Let me talk to some of y'all over here. Some of y'all have been born and bread uh, to bear the weight uh, of other folks. Uh, y'all didn't get it. Let me talk to some of y'all. Some of y'all uh, been saved and sanctified, uh, filled with the Holy Ghost uh, to bear the burdens uh, of somebody else. Uh, is there anybody in here? Uh, find yourself praying uh, and ain't nothing wrong. Uh, find yourself fasting uh, and you don't even need nothing. Uh, God said, uh, go find the donkeys. I need, to, I need to talk to some real folk up in here that you feel burdened down with other folk. And let me help you out. Don't get mad because they can eat while you're fasting. Don't get mad when they tell you how well they slept and you was up all night. You just doing your assignment. Don't get mad when they don't call your name, but you prayed for them all week long. You just doing your assignment. And in fact, before Saul could be elevated, God sends him on a journey to go find some donkeys. Y'all done missed it all. Before you can be elevated, you need some folk praying for you, lifting you up, standing in the gap. I mean, I need to talk to some of y'all that when people say pray for me, you get excited. I know my real donkeys than my horses. Because my real donkeys, when we sing be blessed and we start talking about pray, I'm going to keep on praying. Donkeys get excited. Oh, y'all missed that. Intercessors get excited when they get something to pray about. Intercessors get excited when you tell them to pray for you. Intercessors get excited when when you tell them I need a word, uh, intercessors uh, get excited uh, when other folk uh, need their. You see, an intercessor 
is only good when they praying for somebody else. I need to talk to y'all good selfish prayers. Y'all good folk that from the moment you get on your knees to the time you get up, it's all about you. I need to talk to some of y'all that every time you talk to somebody else, it's always about you. I need to talk to y'all and tell you a secret. Get over yourself. Now, I hurt somebody's feelings right there, so I'm going to apologize. Not for what I said. I apologize for you being immature to handle what I just said. I am tired of tiptoeing through sorry folk that refuse to grow up in the kingdom. You need to put your big boy pants and your big girl pants on and tell the Lord, use me any way you please. I'm an instrument for your service the, 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 the importance for donkey can I, can, I, can I break it down before I get up out of here can I break it down before I get up out of here I'm ready to run already can I, can I break it down before I get up out of here let me, let me help you out a donkey might have a blemish but it'll still carry weight a donkey might have parents that he's never met, but he don't let that bother him on what his assignment is. A donkey may not look like the rest of the animals who's even in the barn with him, but he doesn't change what his assignment is. A donkey may not have the looks like everybody else, but will still carry out his assignment. Let me help y'all out. A donkey may have a limp but it'll still carry come on some of y'all went to the school on the short bus let me help you out some of y'all won't pray because you think your issues keep God from hearing you Reverend I don't I don't look like everybody else I I don't praise God like everybody else. I can't, I can't pray like everybody else. Let me help you out. God didn't make you like everybody else because God ain't in the robot ministry. God is in the people ministry. And people comes with all sizes, all colors. There's some fat believers, skinny believers, some ugly believers, cute believers. There's some, there's some uh, black believers, white believers, uh, long hair believers, short hair believers, uh, Afro believers, receding hairline believers. It don't matter as long as you are a believer. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beast of burden. It's a, it's a, it's a beast of burden. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You, you at your house minding your own business. Minding your own business. Amen. Watching Maury Povich. You, you watching Judge Judy. And the Spirit of the Lord says, turn off the TV and start praying. You don't even know who you praying for. You just been praying. I need to talk to some of y'all. You thought you was going crazy. Let me help you out. You just been called to the donkey ministry. You thought Thought you've been going crazy because uh, you keep hearing voices uh, telling you to pray and lift somebody up and you don't even know their name. Uh, God told me to tell you uh, that when you go to this ministry, it ain't about knowing everybody's name. It's about knowing his name. So I'll go, go find, go find my donkeys. I know, I know you're cute, but go find, go find my donkeys. Go to verse four. He, he looked three different places, all in one verse, looking for these donkeys. And the servant says to him, there's a man of God in town. Let's go see, let's go see him. Can I, can I help you all out? Uh, Saul says, I, I, we ain't got no money. We, we, ain't got no, we ain't got no food. What are we going to bring to the servant of God? What are we going to bring to the man of God? The servant says, man, I, I got a little one-tenth of something. I'll, I'll, I'll give up my last to the man of God so that we can get revelation 
of the assignment. Y'all, 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 y'all stay close. I'm trying to help somebody. So they go into the town. They meet the man of God. And the man of God has been praying and getting word that he's going to meet the new king. Woo, y'all, 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 come on. Y'all got to be Bible scholars today. And here it is, the man of God praying to God, getting word that he's going to meet the, man, the new king. And here it is, the king, not knowing he's the king, looking for some donkeys. And when he goes to the man of God and asks about the donkeys, the man of God says, the donkeys have already been found. Here you are looking, here you are looking, but they've already been found. Let me help you out. For those of y'all single, looking for a man, quit looking. Y'all missed that. Let me shout it again. Quit looking. You just need to be faithful to your assignment. And while you're faithful to your assignment, God will move your bozo to bring in your bo ass. He's on his assignment. God always brings you to your purpose when you're on your assignment. The reason why some of y'all ain't got no purpose, because you won't do your assignment. You think your assignment is beneath you, below you, and you think you're too good for that. And God said, until you're faithful to your assignment, you will never get to your purpose. And all, all of this is, is over some donkeys. Go find my, my donkeys. If when we get ready to move to a higher dimension in the Lord, he says to the pastor, Go look for my donkeys. Don't go look for no more members. Y'all missed that. Go look for my donkeys. He didn't say go look for no more preachers. He said go look for my donkeys. Because in the process of looking for the donkeys, you're going to release a dimension of spirituality that the church has been missing. Because as long as the intercessors are not operating, you're not fully covered. Y'all, 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 come on, y'all. I, I'm, I'm trying to help you. Here's the problem. You are almost as good as you should be. But you too foolish to have somebody praying for you. You think you can get it all yourself. You think as long as Big Mama praying for you that everything going to be all right. I need to talk to some of y'all that you've come to the realization that the purpose on your life is bigger than what you are. And so you got to have some folk praying for you, lifting you up. It's all right to go knock on doors, but we got to have a group of folk praying that you knock on the right door. Oh, no, Reverend, we've been Baptists our whole life. We're going to knock on doors the Baptist way. We're going to come to church first, get in a circle, sing a hymn, read a scripture, and then we're going to go out and we're going to go witness. And you're wondering why you can't take over the city. You will never take over the city with a little bitty prayer circle. Hello, somebody. While you out there working, you got to have somebody over here circling. They got to be lifting you up so that God can use you over there. The problem is you prayed here and went to work there, but nobody was praying for you. And the first time you ran into trouble, some of y'all ran. Come on, let me, let me walk y'all through. Let me walk y'all through Baptist witnessing one-on-one. 
We're here from the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. We're here to tell you about Jesus. You go and you go jump in the river and take the people with you and jump in the same river. Okay, God bless you. We're not going back to that house again. We're here from New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. We're here to share to Jesus. Come on in, baby. Whew, let's go back to the house every week. And what you don't understand is the ministry wasn't just at this house. But the ministry was at that first house when they told you off. But when you got an intercessor over here praying for you, what will happen is while they're cussing you out, the Holy Ghost will fall on them. Even while they're resistant to the word, the Holy Ghost will fall on them. And they'll say, I don't know what it is. I'm sorry for what I said last week. Tell me about this Jesus. We need folks every day praying for the ministry. Every day. Your name may not ever get in the program. Keep on praying. They may not ever mention your name from the pulpit. Keep on praying. The fact that I'm standing here today lets me know I got some intercessors who've been praying all week long. Cover Davis with his crazy self. Cover him, Lord. Make sure. And as an intercessor, you got to understand the characteristics of a donkey. Can I tell you one characteristic I didn't put in my, in my notes, but I got to give it to you? A wild donkey is actually a solitary animal. And a male donkey can have a range of miles. How does he attract a female? He does it with his little e on. That crazy little sound can be heard for miles around. I did my homework, y'all. You got to understand that when you are an intercessor, every once in a while, you got to give an eon. That lets other intercessors in the sanctuary know, I've been praying too. You not by yourself. And the problem is, uh, some of y'all are silent donkeys. And you will get tired being a, sorry, a silent donkey because you think you in it by yourself. Some of y'all don't want to talk to me no more. The word says that where two or three are gathered, touching and agreeing, he's in the midst. You always want to think that's just in the choir. But let me tell you something. In the intercessory ministry, where two or three of y'all are gathered, touching and agreeing, God is in the midst. Because God is everywhere all at the same time. When you invoke God into your midst, it also invokes God into the midst of the ministry so that the ministry got the power that it needs. You, you remember how you used to have card parties? Y'all know I like talking about card parties. Hey, man, I'm not going to talk about y'all card players. I'm going to talk about Pokino today. My, my family played po, Pokino. Y'all know what Pokino is, don't y'all? City folk don't know what Pokino is. Country folk, y'all know what Pokino is. Pokino is kind of like bingo, but you got all these little bitty cups. You got three in a row. You got center. You got Pokino. You got blackout. You got all these different Pokino games. And, and, and some of y'all in here, I ain't going to say no names, Sister Turner, are experts in Pokino. I ain't, ain't going to say no I only said her name because my mama was an expert and she was an expert. And two Pokino experts should never be in the same room. I'm just saying. When, when, when you play Pokino, you know that you get a group of folk. And good Pokino players know you usually play with the same Pokino player. Yeah, yeah, come on, come we're acting all churchy. Be real with me. You know when you got your Pokino group? 
Y'all want to talk to me? Let me help you out. When you go play bingo, you know you're usually sitting next to the same bingo person. Amen. Am, am I still missing some of y'all? Okay. When you go to the casino, you usually take the same folk to the casino every time. You don't usually take new folk to the casino with you. Did I, did I still miss somebody out? When you was about to have a little drink party, you didn't drink with... I still miss some of y'all. Let me, let, me have, let me give one more try. When you was going to smoke some of that stuff that was grown from the earth, you, 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 you had the same folk around you every time you were smoking that, that stuff from the earth because... If you have somebody new, they might call you the police. <laughs> now, how is it that we can have a circle of friends for everything sinful, but we won't have a circle of friends for everything spiritual? It, it, it just seems to me that if I got a circle of friends I can smoke with uh, and can say pass, pass, uh, puff, puff, pass, I ought to have a circle of friends that I can pray with, uh, that can say stay on your knees uh, until we hear from the Lord. Uh, keep on praying uh, until we get a breakthrough. Uh, nobody eats uh, until the Lord shows up. It just seems. You don't understand how important intercessors are. Let me help you out. All of y'all in here ought to be dead and gone. Hallelujah, amen. But the only reason why you're not dead and gone is because somebody prayed for you. Help me, Holy Ghost. Had you on their mind, took out the time and prayed for you. And God, God told me, God says, Davis, release the intercessors at New Hope to start meeting on a regular basis to pray about the church, to pray about the kingdom because the enemy is coming against you because he realizes there's growth about to happen and there's spiritual manifestation so the enemy is starting to come. Listen, 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 listen. I'm, I'm trying to get up out of here. I'm trying, trying to get up out of here. I was, I was minding my own business so on Wednesday, minding my own business at work and the phone rang and he said, listen, they had to rush your brother to the hospital. I got a little nervous, so I got a little worried and, and I said, listen, call me and let me know what you find out. Nobody's there with him. I called his cell phone. He didn't answer. I called my baby brother. I said, listen, man, they had to rush to run to the hospital. I need you to go as soon as you can. And he said, let me get somebody to cover my class. And he went, and then he gave us, he, he says, he, he's, he, he's somewhat all right, but, 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 but they're saying he has diabetes, and they're saying uh, his blood sugars were 600. And, and, and here I am now praying. <laughs> Can I be real with you? Can I be real with you? <laughs> I was not... Uh, 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 praying for y'all. <laughs> y'all dropped off my prayer list because <laughs> there was a prayer that was more important than y'all. <laughs> and I had to ask the Lord, Lord, I need you to touch him. <laughs> and then I got selfish because I can't lose nobody else. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> I just got my bearings back up with me. <laughs> I need you to bless him <laughs> and I need you to do a miracle in his life. <laughs> now let me help you. <laughs> because I was not praying by myself and other folks was praying with me, me. Uh, the power of the Lord uh, showed up uh, not just in Wichita uh, but in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, that's the power of the word uh, that when you pray uh, and you call on the name of Jesus, uh, he will uh, show up. Uh, he will uh, step in uh, and he will uh, deliver uh, right on time.
I'm driving with peace in my heart. Driving with joy in my heart. I know the Lord lives. And on this day, we're going to see his handiwork. I know that God is for us and not against us. I start speaking the promises of God. Just like I've been teaching, I put it into practice. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Is there anybody here ever started preaching yourself? I'll preach myself happy. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's put food on my table. The Lord is my doctor. Never lost a case. The Lord is my attorney. I've been found not guilty every time. I keep talking God's word. Uh, when, when we got there, sitting in the bed, laughing, he said, T, he told me what was going on. I told him, it's all right. My brother's on this way. Hello, somebody. <laughs> You got to understand huh, that whatever you go through, huh, you tell the enemy, huh, my brother's on his way. Huh. Jesus huh, is on his way. Huh. I feel good up in here. Huh. If you don't shout, I'll shout by myself. Huh. When I call him, huh, he is able. Huh. Huh. I need some intercessors that's praying. Ain't praying about no houses. Ain't praying about no new cars. But in the name of Jesus, everybody who ain't saved, when they hear the word of God, let them come to save you, Lord. Everybody that's sick, when they hear the word of God, let them be healed in the sanctuary. I need some intercessors that's ready to go in the battle. Lord, whatever it is, just keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. Heal the sick. Make the lame walk. I need some intercessors that pray before you get here pray before you get here so that when you get here you're ready to work pray before you get here so when you get here you're ready to witness pray before you get here so when you get here you're ready to help I'm going to keep praying for other folk before they start asking for prayer. What are my, what are my real intercessors that know what I'm talking about? I need you to go in such a prayer season that you show up at church to see the prayers answered. I'm, I'm tired of folk talking about it. Be about it. I'm tired of folk talking about folk. All oh, Reverend this, all oh, Reverend that. Be about it. I mean, so Reverend, I ain't seen so and so in four Sundays. Quit talking about it. Pray about it. Pray until the person show up. And then when they show up, quit acting like you ain't seen them in a month or Sunday. Act like they are happy to be here. Pray about it and then watch God bring it. Listen, listen. Where, where, where my folk at? Who living in overtime? Be honest, where my, where my folk, raise, raise your hand back at me. Folks who, who live in overtime, you, you know you ought to be gone, but, but, but you still here living, living in overtime. You know, you know what I'm talking about? If, if, if you living in overtime, let me help you out. You ain't got time for stupid stuff. 
You ain't got time for no stupid games. You ain't got time for no foolish crap. You live in overtime. You know the Lord still has you here for a reason. And you ready to carry out your reason and your purpose. I ain't here to gossip. I ain't here to run nobody down. I'm here to get a word so I can go out there and help somebody out. I'm living in overtime. Now, if you're living in overtime, keep your hand up. You can stand up if you can. If you're living in overtime, then understand this. You ain't got nothing to lose. You already lost, and the Lord brought you back. You ain't got nothing else to lose. What else can Satan throw at you? You already should be dead, but you ain't. If you, if you know you already should be dead, but you're not. If you know you didn't die, but he brought you back. If you know you've been on death's door and he brought you back, you shouldn't be scared of nothing. What is left to throw at you? That's why y'all got to be stronger than everybody else. Why? Y'all got the testimony. Listen, the rest of us in here, when we say we ought to be dead, but we here, we don't know what we're talking about. That's just good church verbiage. But you know you ought to be dead. You've been there and you're here. That ain't verbiage. That's testimony that God will. And let me help you out. Because you've been there and came back, you got a different relationship with God than we got. Y'all, I know, I know, this, this is going to mess y'all Baptist folk up. Y'all got a different relationship than we got. It ain't that we're not close, it's that you're closer by nature because he's done something for you he hasn't done for me. When you say, God woke you up. You totally different than the rest of us. Rest of us just talking. But some of y'all been in a coma where you couldn't wake yourself up. And when you say, God woke me up, that means something. And so I need you who got that extra anointing on your life to move out of obscurity. I'm going to preach about this in a couple weeks, but listen. When the man of God got ready to name the king, he couldn't find Saul. He asked God, where is Saul? God say, he hiding behind the garbage. Some of y'all hiding behind garbage. Garbage up, they won't believe my testimony. Garbage up, they don't know me well. That's all garbage. You got to move from obscurity into the forefront to let those who are going to go do the work know, I got your back. I'm, I got your back. You go do ministry. I'm going to stay here and do the ministry of prayer. I got your back. You keep on preaching. I'm going to do the ministry of prayer. I got your back. Not talking about it. I got your back, meaning, Reverend, you're going to feel my prayers. Importance of the donkeys. We got to have folk who can bear the infirmities of the weak. Until they get stronger. And you can't do it if you're worried about your garbage. Let me help you out. God knew your garbage when he saved you. All your garbage. And I ain't talking about your pretty church garbage either. He knew your secret garbage. That garbage you don't talk about. The garbage that you got underneath your bed. 
He knew your secret garbage and still called you. And if God will call you in spite of your garbage, you ought to go serve him in spite of your garbage. And find out if God won't turn your garbage to benefit you. We have to mature so that we're interceding on people's behalf so they get the opportunity to hear the word. I know that, 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 ain't, that ain't pretty church stuff. But you got to pray for Pookie before Pookie come in. Sometimes you got to pray, Lord, put a hedge of protection that every bullet with Pookie's name on it is counseled in the name of Jesus. We got to move. Some of you here, you've been, you've been hanging. God told me to tell you, quit hanging. At verse 4, you've been in three different places looking for donkeys. God said, donkeys right here. Already been found. Now come on in and carry out your assignment. Quit running looking for somewhere else to make you feel good. Come get your assignment. And as you carry in your assignment, you're going to find your purpose. As we stand all over the sanctuary. We extend to you the greatest invitation. Known to man. A relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Maybe you're here and you don't have a church home and you're tired of hopping. Tired of hanging. And you're ready to come in and carry out assignment. Today is your day. Been praying for you all week. Intercessors are praying for you right now. That you boldly come out of obscurity. That you come just as you are. So wherever you're at, we extend to you the invitation right now. The doors are open.